Welcome to Last Night, your sci-fi recap show. Last night was full of beauties and beasts, and sometimes beautiful beasts. AMC aired new episodes of Freak Show and Comic Book Men, while CW brought us The Vampire Diaries, as well of course, as Beauty and the Beast. Joining me to talk about all of these new episodes is Commander Wolf of the Sing on Empire. Thank you for being here, Commander. Thank you for having me live. I understand you're quite the poet. My people are famous for our poetry, and opera of course. I'd have thought courtship between Singons would be men roaring and stuff. No, the men do not roar. Women roar. Then they hurl heavy objects, and claw at you. And the men read poetry? We also dug a lot. How very progressive of you. So what does a romantic like yourself think of a show like Beauty and the Beast, where the main characters are so frustrated in their relationship, and where one is actually responsible for putting the other in jail? Well it wouldn't be the CW without a frustrated love story playing a major role. On the other hand, Vincent and Kat didn't look all that frustrated at the beginning of the episode. Oh, it was quite the opposite. But then secret identities are also a staple of CW shows along with all they entail. And vendettas are practically a trademark. If you are referring to Lieutenant Bishop's quest for vengeance against the Beast, then I agree. He must be the most unprofessional police lieutenant since the Keystone Cops. During one of his most important cases, he benches one of his best detectives, refuses to listen to eyewitness statements, and declares to the DA that justice means killing the vigilante instead of trying him. He seeks justice for his brother's death at the vigilante's hands. It is his right. That may be how sing on sees it, maybe even how many humans see it, but as a police officer, there's no quicker way to get yourself taken off a case. Of course. His responsibility as an enforcer of the law must come first. I'm glad you agree. He did seem to get his wish, though, when Murfield showed up at Vincent's warehouse and he blew it up to cover his escape only to be shot later in the sewers by buggers. Not the best escape plan I've ever seen. But at least now he may gain another secret ally on the police force. Like he didn't have enough of those before. Let's talk about CW's other paranormal drama from last night, The Vampire Diaries. It's difficult to find honorable characters on that show. Difficult, but not impossible. Since Elena started working her own special brand of magic on Damon, he's become quite the lovable rogue. There is still Carolyn's declaration that people who do terrible things are just terrible people. She said that right before murdering 12 witches. Perhaps proving her point. You don't believe in redemption? I suppose, in a century and a half, that anyone can reform. But we learned more last night of just how much reformation Damon has ahead of him. We saw more of his backstory with Lexi during his own period of being emotionless. Perhaps proving his point, when he told Eleanor that every day she's without emotion is a day she might do the one thing she can't take back. It was a gallant try. But in her current state, she may decide the better option is simply to never turn her emotions back on. I must say, I find her ruthlessness and cold practicality quite attractive but not Caroline's ruthlessness when she saved her friend by killing all those witches. Elena would have done that because she no longer has emotions. Caroline did it in spite of her emotions. Remember when she scolded Klaus for saying even the purest of hearts are drawn to darkness? As your own great poet once said, methinks the lady doth protest too much. I can't argue with that. Let's talk about what was going on over at AMC. Freak Show gave us a demonstration of two very different types of strength in their Strongman episode. Using both strength and an impressive application of physics, Andrew S. was able to pull a 3,800-pound truck by his eye sockets. You kind of need to see it to understand it. But later in the episode, a man named Billy Owen took center stage. Billy is a cancer survivor which anyone can admire. But his cancer was in a very specific location, a tumor in his sinus. Not only was the tumor removed, but so was his right eye and much of what was in that immediate vicinity. 
he now has a gap in which he can deposit little glowing lights and even poke his finger through. As he puts it, he is now a human jack-o'-lantern. Strength comes in many forms, as you said before. I must admit, even I was tempted to look away when I saw him remove his e-patch and show the crowd what cancer had done to him. But now he has a gift beyond merely continued life and health. His wound makes him a beacon of hope not only for survivors, but also for those with similar deformities that they need not be ashamed of what life has done to them. This world once turned its back on those who could not pass as normal. It is becoming a world where the term normal no longer has any meaning. I could not have said it better myself, Commander. Let's talk now for a bit about comic book men. The gang at the Secret Stash decided to start writing their own comic book, a mini-series called Cryptozoic Man, about a man who becomes a combination of Bigfoot, the Jersey Devil, and the Loch Ness Monster. I must confess, I don't understand humans' fascination with creatures that don't exist. Especially after seeing a show like Freak Show, ah, and there are enough wondrous elements in actual life to fascinate humanity. Clearly you don't understand the meaning of the word fantasy. We all have them. And not all of us can be entertained by Shark Week. Why not? It just takes a bit more for some people. Anyway, it was great seeing Stan Lee make a guest appearance to help them pitch their comic to Dynamite. He's becoming something of a regular guest star on the show, and all true believers love his quirky style and over-the-top praise of the boys' project. I look forward to reading it when it's available. Just so long as that character with the metal pig mask is not as creepy as it sounds. We'll see about that. Thank you for joining me today Commander Wolf. My pleasure Liv. And thank you all for watching last night.